Well, apparently by law in Australia, you need to wear a brand on your hat, or so says Ali Felton-Taylor, who's on the ground catching up with all the big hats here at Beef 2024. Indeed, the big hats, Lindsay. But actually, by law in Queensland, your cattle must be branded. It is a Queensland government law. And I bet, Lindsay Douglas, you've swung off the end of a brand a time or two in your life and your association with the beef industry, no doubt. Oh, just maybe once or twice, who knows? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Once or twice, who knows? We're talking about brands, fire brands in this instance, and what a fire brand this young man is. He's 23 years old. His name is Matt Richardson, and in terms of Richo, as he likes to be known, his tools of the trade are thousands and thousands of metres of stainless steel rod and plenty of oxy gas. Richo, thanks for having us. You're a brand maker. Yeah, I am. So, sort of fell into it, but oh, here I am, making brands for a living, so... Yep. Show me one of them. What have you got there? A fire uh, brand? Yeah, so this is a three-piece, a typical three-piece. So, like you were saying before, in Queensland, by law, you've got a brand, and most people brand with a three-piece like this or a symbol brand, so... Yeah. And there are plenty of famous ones in Australia, no doubt. The wine glass brand comes to mind. That's a yep. CBC. CBC brand, yeah, the wine glass up at Newcastle Waters and a few others, like the AA Co one. We were having a chat about them before, yeah. They're pretty famous brands and a lot of people take a lot of pride in seeing their cattle with that fire brand uh, on the rump. I know many, many years ago it was on the rib area, the shoulders and the rib, but it's changed now to the rump. That's the area, is yeah. that right? Yeah, there's a few areas in Queensland by law that you can brand, but yeah, the rump is the most common, Yeah, either the off side or the near side, just preference more than anything. So. So tell me about getting into brand making. It's not your usual trade for a 23-year-old. How did it all start? No, I'm not a boilie. I've got a uni degree and I sort of fell into it by accident. I just made one for me mate and then another mate and here I am. So yeah, a bit of coincidence more than anything. So, How long does it take to make a brand? You've got a few singles over there. Pull one of those over for me. Yeah, so oh, like a single brand, probably yeah, a couple of hours, but a full set, I guess, sort of a day. So yeah, uh, a bit of time goes into it. So. And how many do you think you've made? Oh, it'd be hundreds by now. Yeah, hundreds of three pieces and symbols and probably the same amount of sets of numbers and stuff like that so yeah you also make paint brands too i've got to tell yep. you yep, yep. make so, a paint yeah, brand paint as well brands as well for all your bull sales and heifer sales and stuff like that just to identify the animals of lot category number so yeah fantastic and furnaces so don't don't just stop at the brands you you make furnaces as well yeah do a bit of everything so yeah got the single and the dual burners sort of just depends on what the producer wants, like the singles are probably good for your commercial producer, but the double burners are good for all the stud fellas that are here in the ring, so, yeah. Fantastic. Um, in terms of the number of people who've come to see you here today, what's the, what's the interest been like? Yeah, heaps of people. It's almost, there's almost someone here, like, the whole day, but they come in waves more than anything, you know, and they chatting to people and stuff, but, oh, I couldn't tell you, it'd be hundreds, if not thousands, I suppose, walking past, having a look, which is good. I've got to tell you, Lindsay richard has got a couch here all set up, but the question that comes to mind for me is with a stainless steel brand, it's, they're pretty tough. How long do they last? Is it something that you buy a couple of in your lifetime? What, what do you reckon? Oh, they should last forever, so I'm probably never going to sell one more than someone more than one brand. So, yeah, last me out, hopefully. That's my plan anyway, so, yeah. Let's have a little walk as we're going. Um, Nathan, follow us. We're, we're just going to have a look at some of the, uh, the brands here. These are the singles that you've been talking about. Yeah, so these are just your number brands for identification. Like, commercial producer uses them for age identification, and stud guys use them for working out which animal's what. So yeah. I don't want to give too much away, but I, uh, I would probably use this brand... And this brand, uh, if we're talking about me, 1990, what about you? Oh, just two zeros. <laughs> two zeros, he's 2000, I've given it away, he's absolutely. Oh, but um, let's not knock over these brands. Let's come over to, to one of these furnaces, yep. if we could, Richo. Yep. Tell me about these. These are whacking big situations. Yeah, so probably a shout out goes out to Adam Geddes. He sort of put me onto these. I made the, the single ones originally, and then he gave me a call and said, can you make me a really big one that I can fit all my brands in? So that's how they come about. Um, and yeah, I've sold heaps of them, heaps of little ones, but the big ones, the dual burners seem to be a bit of a hit, so yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. And, um, and how long does it take to make these? Oh, sort of about a day. Like me and my brother knocked out, there's eight of them here, and I think the eight furnaces took us probably six days, like six big days. So yeah, just, just time is what goes into brands more than anything, yeah. so yeah.
Fantastic. You uh, have had a job before this one, but it just got to the stage that demand was so much for your brands and, and associated products, indeed the furnaces, that you've, you've made a, a business out of it. And we've got to ask about the name, Concrete Cowboy Contracting. How did that happen, Richo? Oh, it's a bit of play on words. Same with the sticker on my ute over there. Like, it's more, a few of my mates called me a Concrete Cowboy living in town and then sort of, yes, yeah, registered the business name and then started making brands and it all sort of just got off in one big sort of hit. So I'm sort of stuck with it now. Made, made me sign, so I'm committed to the name forever now. So, yeah. And it's a ripper name. Where have your brands gone to in Australia? Have they just been in Australia or have you thrown a few overseas? Yeah, I've had a, a couple, handful of them go to America that I know of. Um, and then, yeah, pretty well every state in Australia they've gone to. So, yeah, pretty cool sort of feeling knowing your brands are going everywhere. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So uh, in terms of growth for the business, you are a one-man show at the moment or do you have other employees? Is there plans for that or...? Oh, yeah, just sort of me at the moment. Get my brother to help me out a little bit. He's useful sometimes. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. See, see where it takes me. Like, I guess I'm selling brands here, but it's more just, I guess, a display for myself and me, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Never planned on doing it, so we'll see what happens down the track. You mentioned earlier that you fell into it, so uh, the world is indeed your oyster in that respect. Let's go more broadly, because you've had experience in the beef industry and you've obviously been to a lot of beefs before. You're born and bred in this suburb, indeed, in Wandle. So how do you think the beef industry is going? Obviously, you get to hear from people, uh, your customers, and they're, they're paying good money to buy stainless steel brands. So how, what, what's your take on the way the beef industry is uh, feeling at the moment? Yeah, I think everyone's sort of under the, under the crunch a little bit at the moment with the way the market's going and, you know, the, the cost of everything, I think. Um, yeah, we had a few good years, you know, a little while ago, and I think everyone sort of got used to that. And then, you know, with the correction last year, I think sort of caught a lot, few people out. Um, and I don't know, you know, you talk to the agents, they'll tell you one thing. You talk to someone else, they'll tell you another thing. So I, I guess, well, I mean, I've diversified my business with this, but I guess producers probably just need to look at diversifying, I guess, to take the ups and downs of the market out when they can. Richard, what a great answer. And taking a swipe at agents. Uh, you, we just had a mate of yours who's an agent, so that was, uh, that was very targeted, I feel. But Matthew Richardson, thank you so much for having us here, showing us your wares. At 23, I feel like there is going to be an absolutely huge future for you as part of the industry. No, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Great. That's Matthew Richardson. Can you believe it? Just 23. He's been making brands. And as he mentioned, he hasn't quite calculated it yet, but thousands of metres of stainless steel rod, lots of oxy gas, and what a brilliant and entrepreneurial young man you've met here today on Beef TV. Thanks, oh, he's Lindsay. A, he's a beaut bloke. He was down at uh, the ECA a few years ago in the Queensland Rural Ambassador Program and uh, certainly made his impact on a lot of people. I think he's going to have a very bright future indeed. Well, don't go anywhere. What once took seven years could be done in seven days with rapid genetic gains and stockmanship in the sky the ag tech with sky high ambitions to change aerial mustering for the better don't go anywhere